Think about some sheep. Whose voice do they hear more? The shepherds or other sheep? Scripture tells us that there is safety in a multitude of counselors. We're also told that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So I like to say, safety is found in a multitude of godly counselors. Rehoboam had a choice when the people came to him, asking him to lighten the load that their father Solomon had imposed upon them. He saw two sets of counselors. One were the elder men who served under his father Solomon. They gave him advice to lighten the load. Then he asked a younger set of counselors, those he grew up with. And the younger ones told him, gave him a prideful answer about making him harder for them. Come on, his finger is as fat as his father's waist. And he followed the latter as opposed to the former. The older men who worked with the wisest man on the earth, Solomon. So it's not about getting counsel, but godly counsel. And maybe there are times you're not hearing from the Lord as well or as much. But even when you consult with other sheep, ultimately, you need to be able to hear the shepherd's voice. There are times in the Bible, the Lord spoke about prophets who spoke. Even though the Lord had not spoken to them, or in some cases, commanded them to speak. Saying a person who is a prophet may not have the word of the Lord. The Lord may choose to speak to you, communicate to you personally. So in nature, sheep, the voice that's most prominent in their lives are other sheep. And sometimes the sheep are actually wolves in sheep clothing, trying to lead them astray. So sheep hear other sheep more frequently. But the thing is, when they hear the voice of the shepherd, then they need to know, obey the shepherd, despite what other sheep are saying. And for this, we'll go to John 10 verses 1 through 27 about the importance of following the shepherd, the good shepherd. Because many people, they have gotten in trouble because they sought the Lord rather than seeking the Lord directly. They were seeking other sheep and they got a sheepish answer. And sometimes the answer was not the word of the Lord, even though it sounded like it. So whose voice are you listening to? Again, other sheep's voice or voices are going to be more prominent. But you need to hear when the good shepherd communicates. So in John 10, verses 1 through 27. Hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. <clears throat> I wasn't going to go here, but I remember um, several years ago, it's now 2022, but several years ago, I was driving by a mall and I was at an intersection behind his truck and a part of the license plate it had the numbers 101. When I saw the license plate, the number 101 really stood out to me. It may sound strange to some people, but I knew the Lord was communicating something to me. 101. Not to say if this happens to you, this is what it means. But I start searching scriptures. And then I realized the Lord is pointing me to John 10, verse 1, which again he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. The Lord is warning me. Shortly afterward, someone contacted me under the guise of having the word of the Lord for me. But a person was a thief and a robber misusing the name with an alleged word of the Lord. 
That's why it's important for you to know the shepherd's voice and to follow him. Because many will even come in his name. And they're coming to lead you astray. So be careful about other sheep trying to tell you what the shepherd is saying, but it's not for you. And even if you find yourself going down the wrong path, when the shepherd brings correction, when he tells you to turn around, you obey the shepherd. The Lord continued, But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So be careful about how people are trying to approach you. To him the porter open up or openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. I pause. So the shepherd simply goes before them, and the sheep follow him. David in Psalm 23 wrote about the Lord as a shepherd, and by his rod and his staff comforts him. The staff is oftentimes used for walking or gentle correction, but the rod gives a beating. As a sheep discerning the voice of the shepherd, be careful about those who are trying to beat you over the back in an effort for you to follow them. But it's not a gentle thing. The Lord spoke about a shepherd going ahead of the sheep and the sheep following him. They didn't have to beg them, they didn't have to prod them, they simply followed. Part of knowing the Lord's voice, knowing his word, his will, and his way. How does he communicate? Is he going to try to bully you into a position? It says, and a stranger they will not follow. The stranger oftentimes tries using seduction or outright force. So again, and a stranger they will they not follow, but flee from him. Be careful about following other sheep who are following a stranger. Because if you start following other sheep and you find out they are following a stranger, it's time for you to turn around. So again, and a stranger, they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. See, a lot of times, because we are around sheep so much, we start knowing the voice of sheep, or we quote-unquote shepherds, more than we know the voice of the good shepherd. And yes, the Lord can use people to speak to us, to communicate things to us. But we have to know that they're speaking on behalf of the Lord. Those things have to be commensurate with the Lord's words, things in the Bible, His will, and His way. Is this commensurate with the Lord's character? For example, if the Lord is trying to point out someone to you as a spouse He has ordained for you, which do you think is more commensurate with the Lord's word, his will, and his way? That he'd show you the person's heart? Or that he'd show you the person's buttocks? Knowing the Lord's voice. And I prayed you said heart as opposed to buttocks. This parable spake Jesus unto them. But they understood not what the things <laughs> what things they were which he spake unto them. Again his sheep know his voice. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers many counterfeiters, but the sheep did not hear them. Also nothing. 
Just because many people may have led you astray, do not harden your heart to the things of the Lord. To include spiritual things. I mentioned about the license plate thing. That may have been the only time where the Lord communicated to me a license, communicated to me via a license plate. But it happened that time. And there was godly fruit as a result of that communication. And then I had to choose to obey the Lord and what He showed me, or what the thieves were trying to do. I chose the shepherd, and I'll continue choosing shepherd. So do not harden your heart to the things of the Lord, because you led, listen to other sheep who led you astray. The Lord continued, I am the door. By me, if any man, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not for, or but, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Ezekiel 34 speaks about heavy shepherding. Those who feast or fleece the Lord's sheep. Those who feed upon the Lord's sheep. These things are showing the character of God. He leads. He doesn't push and try to bully you. That doesn't mean he can't get stern with you. The Lord got stern with King Abimelech in Genesis 20. But still, he gave my choice to comply or not. And there will be consequences. But we need the full counsel of God so that another voice does not lead us astray. The Good Shepherd gave up his life for us. Others want to take our lives. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own sheep are not seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. The Lord knows who are his. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore, Doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again? No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. There was division, or there was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, he hath a devil, and is mad. Why hear ye him? Offer said, These are not words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Hmm. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? Is he making them doubting, or are they doubting? Or are there others making them doubt? He con they continued, If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told ye you, and ye believe not. Uh-oh. And if you look in the preceding chapter, John 9, after he'd healed a man who'd been blind. Oh, there was just such contention between... Oh my gosh. So they saw this stuff, but refused to believe. And the Pharisees didn't make it better. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not my sheep. And as I said to you, 
My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Do not follow anyone who is not following the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not take directions from someone who is not pointing you closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul wrote about, Be ye followers of him, or be ye followers of me, as I am of Christ. So unless a person is communicating things to you on behalf of the Lord, is pointing you closer to the Lord, and the person may be another, quote-unquote, God-loving, God-fearing sheep, but the person is not pointing you to the Lord, drawing you closer to Him, ensure that you're hearing the Good Shepherd for yourself. And remember, most of the time, it's a sheep speaking. But even among the voices of the sheep, you have to be able to hear the shepherd. And for some people, you have been tested with spiritual warfare. Most of the things you've heard has been from the kingdom of darkness. And then ever so often, the good shepherd will communicate something. And then you'll know. That was not one of those devils. That was of the Lord. Yes, you get tested in such a way. So it's important to know the voice of the shepherd, the good shepherd. And whether it's other sheep communicating things to you or devils, that no matter who is always in your ear, that when the good shepherd communicates, you hear his voice and more importantly, you obey. And to obey the Lord is a sign of your love for him. Even in Deuteronomy 28, the blessings and the curses were predicated on whether the people listened and obeyed or if they did not. So God bless you and merge Jesus Christ as Lord. And no matter how many sheep or wolves try communicating to you, the voice they need to hear and obey is that of the Good Shepherd. Jesus the Christ is Lord.